How many have seen, it's only the third episode's airing tomorrow night, Parish on AMC. Uh, well, you're in for a treat here. Uh, let me introduce you to the two stars of this new series, AMC and AMC Plus. Uh, first up, uh, he plays Colin in the show, Skeet Ulrich. <laughs> right there, that one right there, yeah. And you know him from so many things, and he's in so many things right now, The Gentleman and all kinds of things. In addition to Parrish, please welcome, as Gray Parrish, Giancarlo Esposito. Yes, uh, amazing. They love fun. you. They love you guys. And uh, this is a new show, so we're going to get their appetites very wet for this to, uh, you know, want to watch this because it's in the middle of its run right now. Giancarlo, th you are also executive producer of this as well. Yes, I am. Yeah, very proudly so. This has been an eight-year journey to get this particular show to the screen, and it's a very personal story for me. Um, and it's the story of an every man, every woman, um, who uh, uh, this particular man, Gray Parish, is hiding a certain past that he's been try he tried to walk away from and became a family man. So the show is a crime drama that's very exciting and electrifying. And yeah, and he's kind of the wheel man for a crime syndicate as well. Uh, in in he is due to his unfortunate encounter with an old and very dear <laughs> friend. He gets pulled back into a life that he tried to leave behind yeah. uh, for one last job to be able to get out of the debt that he's in in his black car business and to save his home. So the impetus behind it is that he's sacrificing himself with this one job for his family, yeah. and then he gets pulled back in for a number of reasons. So much to talk about. Let's take a look at a scene from Parrish right here. Come on, man, push. Hey, turn it left and punch it again. That's my left! We got the same left, Colin. We'll turn it the other way! No, man, no, it's not working! Damn it! You know what? Man, you, you, you never think. You never think ahead of nothing. This ain't my drop! Oh, oh you yeah, the oh. one who brought us out here! This ain't your drop. Yeah, that's right. But well, we ain't gonna discuss it, because there's nothing to discuss, because you never think ahead of time. Oh, you yeah. always think, you never think beyond the moment! Do you? Oh, this is about Cleveland now. Now I get it. That was not my fault, Gray. Not my fault. Cleveland was your mark, right? And he was on to us. And I knew we should have bailed from the top. But no, 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 no. I had a bad feeling about the whole thing. And I knew it. No, but you, you're going to jump right in. I no jumped in. You jumped in, too. Because Rose was pregnant. No, don't you bring her in. Yeah, what, am I lying? Am I lying? No, you deflected. You didn't do your homework. You didn't do it then, and you didn't do it now. Seriously, Colin. How many lives have sunk to the bottom of a shitty lake? Oh, right, 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 right. Says the man who's drowning in his own debt. Where are you going? God. Colin, you play in this, and I love the Cajun accent. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it's a, you know, New Orleans is certainly a character in this piece, but then a little bit more about that day, stuff you don't see. Um, we had lightning strikes. We had 30-minute delays. We had so much work to get done. We had four scenes there by the water that we sort of instinctually in, in one take began doing as one, which wound up in 10, 12-minute takes. But they were really electric, and it was saving us time. And then we had lunch, had another strike up against it. And we turned the cameras around, and he and I get to this point, and, and the cut starts there where he shoves me. But in one of them, I shove him back. And there was a point in this scene where some other things were needed, and so the edge of that bank was sort of cut out. Well, he slipped and went off of this bank into the water, and I'm like, oh, man, I think I just lost my job. And, <laughs> and so I reached down to grab him. He's ad-libbing stuff, you know, and I reached down to grab him up, and he pulls me in. 
Now, they were clearing alligators out of this pond earlier that morning. <laughs> now we're in there ad-libbing, ad-libbing. We get out, and he continues the scene. We continue this whole elaborate thing that goes on after 15-minute take that the crew erupts in applause after we finish. And unfortunately, it's not there, but in our hearts. It's there. That is a memory we will never, ever forget. Something we'll never forget. Yeah. I, there's a lot of car action in this, too, you as a driver, and you, so you're working with cars, and you, you two, even as a promotion for this, I happen to see it online, uh, both entered a go-kart race against each other. I mean, seriously, you're taking this seriously, and I hate to say it, but he won. He did. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a street racer. He's a track racer. Right, exactly. We have, we have different <laughs> skill sets. Someone's chasing me. I'll always win. <laughs> what is it about this character? We've loved you on AMC. I mean, when you think of Giancarlo, you think of AMC, too, between Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul as Gus Fring and just like such a monumental kind of run that you had with those shows. And now you're back with this network. Uh, and I'm so happy to say, leading your own show. Yeah. I'm very pleased to be with AMC. They've been very supportive. This show is like no other that they have seen on their network. And what makes it personal for me is that this, it's the story of someone who's struggling to overcome a dark past and live in a brighter future, but unable to make that choice. Uh, and a person who's up against the wall economically will do many things that are out of character and out of the ordinary. Um, what I love to see about you know, Gray Parish's journey, and I think where the audience will join us, and I hope that you will, is that you'll, you'll want him, you'll see him making bad decisions, and you'll s want him to make better ones. He is an anti-hero, which means he's a good man, but he's being sucked back down the drain, and he doesn't want to go that way. Um, you'll see very tender scenes with his family. Uh, you'll see very tender scenes with an old and very dear friend who he cares about and knows has gone the wrong way, but he can't really quite pull him out either. Uh, and so it's a, it's a real, um, it, has, it has really mythological um, remnants in the story of this every man in an everyday life unable to make ends meet. How did you two, did you have time to develop the chemistry that is so apparent right from the beginning? It doesn't always happen with a new series. You have to sort of work your way into it. But you could see just from that scene, if you haven't seen the show, and you could see you have instant chemistry, and you know we sort of already can tell where these two lives have been and now intersect again. Yeah, I mean, it's a blessing, first of all. It is rare for it to be that, that immediate and that sort of evident. Um, a lot of it for me came out of sort of hearing the music of the piece and all the bass notes he had to carry and feeling like we needed something staccato to sort of allow him to revel in those moments and, and to also move the story along. But So the chemistry became kinetic just from the rhythms, the musicality of it in my mind. But then you put us together and for some reason it just, from that moment to this moment, it's uh, it's been that way. It's been just some sort of meeting of the heart, of the minds, of the souls that is just, you know, uh, lightning in a bottle. You know, it's when you meet someone that you feel like you've known forever. Skeet and I met probably 30 years ago. I was uh, teaching at the Atlantic Theater School, um, at the Atlantic Theater Company in New York. I was and a student. We had a, an immediate, you know, a liking for each other, and then we had, didn't see each other for many years and came back together. And it was just, um, it, it's, it's, you know, when you have that saying, um, Skeet's like a brother from another mother. And, uh, and it's so fit so seamlessly in this because when you're working with an actor as giving as Skeet is and as giving as I am, um, you're, you're serving up the symphony of the music of the piece and, and it becomes uh, much bigger than you are. And so we're able to create some explosive scenes and some very tender scenes as well and we work together seamlessly. So um, it's really been a joy, Skeet. Same brother, same. I noticed this, yeah. I noticed this is very strong on, on the family story, too, and you and your wife and the family and everything you're fighting for, which is what gives us tremendous empathy for this guy, despite some of his bad decisions and things that he goes through, because we see where it's coming from. And it's intense. Those scenes are intense with the family. Uh, they are, and they're personal to me, because I realize if not now, then when? In telling this story, um, when I saw the original driver that it's taken from, a British version. This uh, is based on a British series. Based on the British TV show, Three Two Hour Movies by Danny Brocklehurst, that there was a man in David Morrissey's character that I recognized. And when I recognized that man, I recognized that character uh, reflected the man that I am. 
And so this is peppered with parts of my life. You know, in my marriage, I made a lot of mistakes. And I'm not married anymore. I have four really beautiful daughters who I'm really committed to. And how do you navigate that? How do you navigate looking at your own mistakes and trying to recover from them and, and, and move away from that so that you can, one, one, in one moment, say, that's the old me. Well, it's not just one moment that creates that. It's living a different way. And so I had to learn in my own life to live a different way now to be able to be the new person that I envision myself to be. And so Gracie and Parrish is not me yet in that moment, but he's a reflection of things that I went through in my life. I lost my house, lost my marriage, living in a goat barn, started doing yoga, started praying to God, wanted to kill myself so my family could go on. These, this is all true. So a lot of this character, the information that has come out, out. Again, if not now, when um, I wanted to put into this so I could exercise the demon of that old me. Wow. <laughs> so when this came along, did you pitch it or how did this come to you with the showrunners and everything to get all of you into this? It, it came to me through my partner, um, my manager, Josh Kesselman, who also helped produce this. And, um, and we went to Danny Brocklehurst to write it, but he was writing for Netflix and said he couldn't come aboard. I found another collaborator to work with, and then we figured out to, to, how to place it in New Orleans. And then we went back to Danny uh, when we couldn't find the right writer to really write it, and Danny joined us. Uh, and then I pitched it to FX. It went all over the place, again, an eight-year journey. Um, and got a partner, a really wonderful partner in A&E to join with AMC. Um, I took it to AMC, and they looked at it, and they started putting us through our paces. You know, do another draft, do another draft. So after eight drafts, they still weren't giving us a green light. I said, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Do a Bible, do this, do that. And that's when I realized that it, I needed to deepen the story. The story needed to be relatable. You need to look on the screen as an audience and be able to relate to any character you saw. When you looked at Colin, you need to look at him and, and be empathetic toward him and understand that he's someone that you could have been if you had partially lived a nefarious life. And you had to like him, too. So Skeet was a, the perfect choice for that. So I started to figure out how to pepper things in that emotionally meant something to me. And then AMC, we were on the precipice, and I finally just picked up the phone. Like, what you do today determines your tomorrow. What you envision will come true. If you build that they will come, all that stuff. I called Dan at AMC, and I said, look, I know you're considering, and I really feel strongly, that's not the only idea that I have. You have to have many ideas, A, B, C, backup. I went, I have an idea for more than one season, and I really love to be doing this with you because it feels like family. And, and that call um, allowed him to know my passion, which you can all feel, and that passion allows me to step aside out of my own self and do something that I believe people can really relate to and will also entertain them. So all the car stuff is, of course, it's there to entertain and it's real. You can feel it. It's uh, electrifying, but the story is really a human story that hopefully we all can relate to. Are you doing all your own driving? I am. All right. Boy, do I love it. Skeet's giving me pointers. <laughs> I am not. He's giving me pointers. He doesn't need me in yeah. any way. Are you riding with him? When he... <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't get to ride in some of that stuff. No, but, but we will. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. You know, when I went down there, they said, prove it. And they put me in a car, and they went out, and they said, you know, they put the cones up. And, uh, and they said, do you know how to do a reverse 360? I'm sure you do. And I said, uh, I said I'm familiar, but I don't really know how. And, um, and they showed me how to do that move, which you'll see in the piece. Um, I know how to drive fast. I know how to navigate. I know how to use the brake. I know how to slide the car. I know the Pittman move. So I knew a lot. And I had to show them that I knew that. And then they took it from there. They just taught me. And, and so, you know, I get a chance to do a lot of that driving, which is very, you know, it's, 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 you have to be very precise and very careful because it's a movie set and we don't own all the streets. So I'm very cognizant and careful behind the wheel. But I've always been a driver, and, and I love driving. It's exciting, but you, you need to be in control while you're doing it. How do you like working in New Orleans? Uh, I loved it. I, I've worked there one other time, and, uh, and this time I think we were there five months, something like that. And it's, it's an incredible place. The people, the food, the culture, the music, the architecture, the history, all of it. It really, it's somewhere you can really feel and get involved in. And it's, um, it's, it's just a great place to be. And playing Colin, you know, the Cajun was written in there. So I couldn't imagine having to film that in Vancouver and, you know, <laughs> do that accent on a daily basis. But, um, 
Yeah, I, I love New Orleans. I, it's a really extraordinary place. Place there because it's a haunted city in a way as well. You can have all the good, but you, all the light, but you can also have all the dark. And for me, it was a great analogy for who Gray Parish really is in this moment that we meet him. And we want to see him move from one place to another and our audience to follow in that way. So in that way, it's very rich, rich in color, as you'll see when you see the show, uh, but rich in music and rich in, in, in food as well, but rich in soul. Like, what I'm finding is to, to make a show that, that is relatable for many people, we want to have um, many different versions of the painting. And we want to have something that's soulful, that will draw you in, so that we can do things that aren't only about just saying them. Not just with words, not just describing something, but we want you into a visual where you can feel, you can feel something. And isn't that what film is all about and television is all about? We want you to feel something deeply, and we want you to have those deep belly laughs that you will have in this as well, but you want to feel that turmoil and that city. You can feel the energy. It can be whatever you want it to be, um, and however it exemplifies how you live your life. Parish Sunday nights, AMC. Check it out. Thank you, guys. Thank for you. Out here. Thank you, everybody.